Hey, this is Lucas from Archery Talk, and we just got in the brand new uh, black gold competition site uh, for our target bow shootout. And uh, we're gonna have a look and see what's inside this, this box. And uh, here is the, uh, yeah, here's the main kind of sight bar. Here is the kind of scope mount. We've thrown on a specialty archery super scope, one and five eighth inch on this one. Uh, kind of use this for 3D setup. And then here is our uh, part that mounts the scope onto the bow itself. Let's dig in. So this competition sight from Black Gold is, I think, the most versatile and uh, sight I've ever seen. You just there's so many things you can do uh, as far as adjustment on this goes. And uh, we'll start off by just kind of removing the dovetail. Just have it, have it hand tightened right now, and you can just unscrew those two hex bolts like that. And just on the on the bar itself, you can see you've got. A bunch of, you, you can put it on the left position here, you can put it on the right position there, and a, and a variety of, uh, of top and bottom. I think there's like four different choices you can go with on each side. So tons of vertical adjustment and a little left right adjustment, adjustment right there. Then this bar itself over here, this mounting thing that mounts the dovetail to the side itself, you can, you can take those two screws out and then you can move this in various, you can move it to the left, move it to the right, depending how much kind of left to right movement you need to have. I've got mine set in the middle right now just until we we get moving um, and we'll figure out from there. And also there's a gang adjustment uh, right here as well, which you can loosen with a bottom screw there. This is all just for like a gang left to right movement. And then you just, this one is all done with clicks. There's eight clicks per turn on this one. And you can move it a little bit uh, into the right or to the left. And then once you get that kind of settled more or less where you want it to be, then the actual scope itself has a really small micro adjustment. So we'll, uh, we'll lock this one down for now. And then I'm just going to mount this right back on the bar, more or less where I had it to begin with. So. so once you've kind of got the, the dovetail mounted on the site itself, you can look at first axis adjustment, which is done uh, just via a single screw, which you can kind of see it right there. It takes a smaller Allen key. And then you can tighten, you turn it left or right, and there's movement marks right there and kind of show you how much left to right you want to do. Um, so you, there's, there's a line on the actual site itself you can kind of match up to the, to the one on the dovetail and you can get it to your spot you want it to be and then you're good to go. Lock it down. You're just going to lock it. Then you get, after that you lock down the, the dovetail. You want to have that kind of hand just kind of just, just loose enough for that to move. If it's tightened down too much it's not going to be able to move. And that's your first axis adjustment. So once your first axis is set, uh, you can I'll just like just about every other side out there, you can start playing with your second axis adjustment. And for that one, we just have to loosen these two screws here, which I want to guess is this one. You need a lot of Allen keys for this thing. Um, so by one minor complaint right now is there's you have to keep about six of them on hand just to be able to adjust everything on this side. Uh, not a huge deal, but once you get those loosened, there's a tiny little screw right there. Once you just put the small Allen key in, same one as you use for uh, doing the first axis adjustment, and just make left or right turns. And once again, there's 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 kind of lines you can match up on the on the kind of the assembly and on the dovetail mount over there. And just left to right and get get it all set up how you want it to be. Once you get it locked up into place, tighten that down, snug it down. And we're good to start looking at third axis. All right, with the first and second axis is done, we're going to look at the third axis now. Normally, you'd want to have a scope on this thing and have it on a sight leveler, but just for purpose for our purposes, we're just going to show you how to do it. There is a there's two locking screws you have to loosen before you can start making adjustments. One is at the very top in the, of the dovetail, so you just kind of give that a half turn loose. And there's one again on the on the inside of the dovetail, and same thing, give it a little bit of a half turn twist, just enough to loosen it up. And now there's a larger screw right against the, the dovetail on the outside. And this is just really small adjustments here. I think it's like about half a turn left and a half a turn right is all you've got in it. And basically it just kind of moves the arm of the dovetail in and out just a little bit. Um, so that'll help you with your uphill and downhill shots so your sight stays perfectly level. So I'm just going to set mine more or less in the middle for now until I can 
get it on a good site leveler, and then we'll cinch it down. Again, turn to, we'll tighten up both sides. And this thing is now ready to go. I'm going to show you now how to put on the scope. And in this case, again, this is our super scope from Specialty Archery. I've got mine outfitted with a 4X lens on there for 3D purposes. This is a 1 and 1 5 8 inch scope. So we're just going to lock that down. It's similar to putting the scope on just about any other kind of popular uh, target site. So once that's on, we can start looking at the micro windage uh, adjustments for your left to right. So we talked about the, the, two, the two at the base here you can play with for big, big major changes and gang adjustments. And this is your micro one. So first of all, there's a locking tool in place there. So you click that over and you cannot make any small, any accidental adjustments in your, if you're carrying it in your bag or moving it from place to place in a 3D course. Unlock it out there and then just start making minor changes left to right. It's all easy clicks to know exactly how far you've gone. If you look on the inside here, you'll actually see um, indicator lines to show you how far you're going in or going out, just so you know, if, oh, I, need, I need to move one line in or two lines in. Um, my only issue with this one is that there's a, there's, a, there's a little kind of an arrow there at the end. When you come to that, it's when you're supposed to stop. Instead of actually having a hard physical stop that won't let you go past, uh, if I keep going on this one, this will eventually just get loose, and, and, uh, and I don't know if it'll come right off the scope or not. I'm not going to play with it, but anyway, it's just an odd, an odd little bit, but nothing serious. Anyway, I'm gonna, once you've got that set your left to right, just put it in your lock, and you're kind of good to go for your left to right. Um, as far as your up and down on this, um, there's a, it's a little bit different than other ones I've seen. There's a, there's a, a dial here, uh, rather than like a, a, an individual plunger button or anything you'll push down. So if you, if you kind of stay, if you need to move the whole thing, uh, like for big adjustments, let's say you're at a 20 yard target and you're gonna go somewhere that's like a 50 yard target, you don't wanna do with micro clicks, you move that up, move the dial upwards two or three turns and then you can just move the whole block and do a big hard adjustment like that. And what you, if you wanna do micro adjustments, you kind of just turn that down a little bit. You don't wanna lock it hard, you just wanna take it off the lock a little bit uh, and then the micro clicks can, can catch. Uh, and these micro clicks are not available when it's fully loosened. So we'll not do micro adjusts at the same time it can do kind of big, big, uh, big, big adjustments. So you kind of move it down almost to the lock position, but not quite, I think, anyway. And then you can just start doing micro clicks for adjustments like that. It does, there's 20 clicks per turn on this thing, and a total of, I think, 65 turns. Um, so on, on, the, on the tape that comes with that, that'll be like a 65 yards of adjustment on most sight tapes. On most bows, you're going to be going much more than that. But that just kind of gives you a, a general example. Um, another thing I really like on this thing is the actual pin, uh, which you can see in there. So unlike some other pins, uh, this one is, is actually nice and solid. It's, it's, it's flush against the, uh, against the side just about, so you're not going to catch yourself on it. You're not going to poke yourself with it. It's easily visible, and uh, if you need to move it up or down, let's say you put a sight tape on there, you're not, you don't have it quite right. It's super easy to adjust. You just loosen that, that hex screw again, and you can just start sliding this thing up or down to get to your starting point. And then you're good to go. And there's also three different screws there. Um, so you can, if you, need, if you need to have it a little bit higher in the yardage, you can move, it, move the screw up to there or a little lower, move it there, or vice versa, whatever you need to do. Anyway, find your spot, lock it down. There's one on the outside and there's one on the inside. So if you want, this will probably where you put your own sight tape on the inside right there. And so you just make the same movements there. A little loosen of the, of the screw here let you move that up and down, or you can replace it and to put one of the other holes entirely. When you're ready to put this on the bow, the competition site, that's got the regular, this is what mounts, the, this connects the dovetail to your actual bow. And again, it's super similar, just anything else might see. You just slide it in, oops, loosen that a little bit, find your, find your spot you like to keep it at. And then I was talking to uh, one of the pros I know who shoots this particular site, and it's got a bit of a Delrin uh, end on the end of the screw, and so you really have to cinch it down hard, really squeeze it hard to keep make sure it stays into place. And once you do that, then you'll be locked and loaded, and uh, this thing won't move for you when you got to go to target to target. So the big choice for us now was to figure out which bow we were going to put this on of the four bows we we're testing. And so I figured I'd ask the people, so we went on the Archery Talk Facebook page, and asked if they wanted to have this uh, black gold competition site on the Botech Fanatic, 
the Prime STX 39 V2, the Hoyt Prevail 40, or the Matthews TRX 7, and uh, the people chose to put it on the Bowtech Fanatic 3.0, so that's what I'm going to do this week. Uh, I'll play with that and uh, see how it all works out in actual real life action. I've never, I'm not, this has not been mounted on a bow yet, so I'm looking forward to trying. <laughs>